you can download the Sort Data Collector from sort.symantec.com. From the Sort website, click Downloads. From the Downloads page, click Sort Data Collectors. This brings you to a page where you can choose from multiple versions of the data collector. To start the download, click the platform that you're working with and the download will begin. Before running the sort data collector, you may need to set the permissions to be executable for the logged in user. Once the permissions have been set, go ahead and execute the data collector script. It may ask if you want to back up the old sort directory. This appears that the data collector was previously run on this system. Normally, you'll want to answer yes to this question. The script will now uncompress the data collector. Answer yes to start the data collector. After starting, the data collector may ask if it can perform an update to itself. If this server has access to the internet, it's usually best to allow it to update itself to the latest version. Press Enter to accept the terms and conditions. Choose which semantic product that you're working with. For this video, we'll choose option 2 for Storage Foundation. At the next menu, it asks which task you would like to perform. Notice that there are quite a few options available. Since we want to run a VX Explorer, let's pick option 4. One nice thing about the data collector is that it allows you to run a VX Explorer on multiple servers in one operation. The menu asks you how you would like to specify the servers that you would like to include when running the VX Explorer. If you only want to run a VX Explorer for the current server, then just pick option 1. If you want to include multiple servers, you can specify them directly or specify an IP range. In this example, we'll choose option 2 to manually specify multiple systems. At the next prompt, enter the host names or the IP addresses. You can also specify the path to a file that contains the names. Now it asks you to specify a username. Of course, in the real world, you probably won't be using root as your username, but this is just an isolated lab box. Next, the data collector is going to try to figure out which protocols are available for it to perform the log gathering. If you have a cluster, the data collector will actually check to make sure that you didn't forget to specify any of the nodes. In most cases, you want to choose Yes to have it run all VRTS Explorer modules. By default, the data collector will store its data under var. At this prompt, enter the tech support case number. The data collector includes this case number in the name of the tar file that it creates to store the collected logs. If you don't yet have a case number, you can just enter anything unique. By default, the data collector will store its temporary files under var temp. The data collector now gives you the option of running a risk assessment check. This isn't required, but if you choose yes, it runs through a list of general health checks and then creates an XML file that can be uploaded to the sort page for processing. Choosing this option may add a significant amount of time to the data collection process, so if you're in a hurry, answer no to this question, but for this example we'll say yes. It's going to ask you if you want to run it for each node that you included in the data collection process. Now it asks if you want to collect any core dumps that were found in the root directory. Core dumps are useful when troubleshooting a process that's terminating unexpectedly. However, including core dumps can also dramatically increase the time and size required for the data collection process. So if you're confident that the issue that you're troubleshooting does not involve core dumps, then you can just skip it. So for the next few questions, you'll normally want to just choose the default options unless you've been instructed otherwise by a technical support representative. 
So now the actual data collection process begins. How long it takes will depend on your configuration and the options that you've selected. So it can be anywhere from five minutes to over an hour, depending on uh, what you've selected. Once the data collection process is complete, it creates a tar file to store the logs. By default, it places the tar file under sort slash reports. The data collector will now offer to upload the tar file for you. If you say yes, it will begin the FTP process. And it's going to ask you the same question for each server that was included in the data collection process. When the upload is complete, you can go ahead and choose yes to exit.